Okay, I still can't go as fast as I'd like yet, but we're coming into our second poster boy of the harlot. Our first was obviously Constantine, and we're looking at the aftermath of that. Now we come to another ha-ha. Valentinian III, that's um, Western Emperor, Empire, the effective end of the Western Rome. According to historians, they think that, you know, this is really when we should date it. As far as the effective end, not the official end. Kai uk esten. At the end of that, and that's a clause on its own. These being the angels being kind of poetic here, so you have to break up the clauses where they actually occur. And here it's very short. And is not. That end, you take 367, you add 88, because John's writing in 88 AD. That takes you to 455. That is the death of Valentinian III, which you can verify here. So he is not. He's gone. Kai Ugesson, the whole phrase applies to him. By the end, he's gone. He dies. Now, the story of his death took all those syllables to occur. There was a conspiracy against him by the Byzantine Emperor aided by his Polkaria bitch okay because after Theo the second dies she becomes she's she's left she, she marries some guy but they could they don't have sex because she's the new Mary okay and there's a rivalry a jealousy that's going on between the people sort of behind her and the people that are going behind Valentinian. And Valentinian is very young. He's not quite that young by 455, but he's young enough. And so the Byzantines sort of like help engineer his death because they're afraid of rivals since she's the female and she married a guy unrelated to her and had no royal connection of any kind. They're worried that, that maybe his progeny or something like that is going to be able to take control of the Byzantine Empire. So they want to get rid of him. So they sort of engineer all kinds of things going on. He ends up being assassinated. And that takes a while. Four years. They finally succeed in assassinating him. He sort of helped because he was a pretty te tempestuous kind of guy. So he is not now either. Kai Uk Estin. And not is. Not now. He's gone. Now the year before he dies. Another interesting guy. Attila the Hun. Who's going to end up. Well he, he, he sacked Rome before. But he's got. Or helped it. Because um, Rome has already been sacked. It was sacked right up in here. Western Rome was sacked up in here before. But it was sacked several times. Though actually quasi sacked. And there was a guy named Stilicho. Who the. Who stopped it from being sacked. Then there was another guy named Aetius who was a vandal also. And he knew Attila. And Attila dies in 454. So he dies right here. Now he wasn't a Roman emperor but he threatened the Roman Empire enough. They were paying him a ransom. The full story of that is here. It's not, it's not the best source you can read. I've got other sources that you can read when you go through this. Okay? Because it doesn't just stop at 434 AD. It goes past it. And it covers Attila and it covers Valentinian. So you can read other links. But that's a pretty cute story right there. That's actual contemporary account of Attila's death and life. And that's an account of his death that, you know, fills in other details. Sorry. Okay. So. The whole clause is indicative of the time. And is not. So when Valentinian III dies. It's like after him it's like musical chairs. And, and 
there's no stability to the Roman Empire left. They're sort of in debt to their barbarians, Attila happening to be one of them. So if he didn't die the year prior, Rome wouldn't be alive at all. And Byzantine could care less because they really want to take Rome back. Alright. Mark satirizes this as Adelpho, Adelphos Adelphon in Mark 13. One brother destroying another. Which is pretty much what it was. Okay, so now we start with the musical chairs. And Leo the First in the East is the next guy taken over. After Pulcheria dies. Thank God she finally dies. And this is where the bid to to control Western Rome begins with Leo the First. He sets up a puppet, Antithemius. Antithemius is set up to ward off the Vandals, but he's just a puppet of Byzantium. Okay? So that's like, and there's about to come up from the, the pits. So actually, this is a busas, that's a watery section underneath the Tigris and Euphrates. Well, maybe not under the Tigris and Euphrates, but it's in the depths. Abusas means depths of water. Revelation 9. Revelation 9 has already been covered, so there's not much more to say about it. You're expected to know. It's going to be coming up. So it's, it's, it's basically saying it's all demonic. It's being influenced by demons because that's what Revelation 9 is about. About 200 million demons, not humans. 200 million demon army. My pastor exegeted that passage. He made a lot of important stresses on it. Three demon armies. They are not humans. Okay? And they torture people for five months and you know you can go listen to it yourself. But the point is, is that he's a puppet of the East. Now what is that going to mean? this puppet therefore is going to be conforming to whatever the East wants so whatever Western doctrines Western Bibles that exist this guy Leo is going to want to get rid of that's demonic a Bible is a Bible is a Bible it's not more or less valuable because of who possesses it it's valuable because of the text that it contains. And of course the people who were making the copies of this very book didn't understand that they were being anathematized here by Antithemius. <laughs> but I don't really know how to characterize the wit and the satire here except to say the whole phrase and explain what I just did. So I can't pick out any particular syllable and put it in purple. So then we move on and they will lead away okay they will go literally it's that they will go away to destruction they will be led to destruction this final beast okay at the end of that 388 plus 88 is 476 and any historian will tell you that is the official end of the Western Roman Empire. So the Western Roman Empire is led away by a particular barbarian called Odovacar. And Paul had ended Ephesians 1.14 at 434 AD which is when Odovacar just turned 15 which is in Roman culture. That's when you become a man. And he got a prophecy that he would become great then. And this is when that prophecy is fulfilled. I see, all that stuff is future. Paul's writing in 58 AD. Did God tell him that it was Odovacar? Did God tell him that Odovacar would be 15 and that when he was 15 he would get a prophecy? I, I doubt it. Maybe he did. But the text doesn't say that. But when you get to those syllable counts that stand for those years, you'd know. Because Odovacar actually takes over the Roman Empire at this point. 
He's a, I want to say he's a Ostrogoth. And he talked about his prophecy when he fulfilled it. Oh, I was prophesied when I was 15 that, you know, I'd be great and take over. Well, here we are. Okay? So it's benchmarked. So when you got to those years, if you knew how to count your syllables, if you were one of the two or three people left on the planet at this point who actually knew that you were supposed to do this, you would be saying, oh, that's what it means. Okay. So you would know. And, of course, the Roman Empire fell because Byzantium wouldn't help. Byzantium wouldn't help because they were already busy paying tribute to all the barbarians anyhow just to keep their own land together. They also wouldn't help because they were jealous of the West. And they didn't want the West to survive because if they're having problems, they want the West to have problems too. And that's why Anathemus was set up as a puppet. But he obviously was not given any help because nine years later, see here, 67. Nine years later, 476, Western Rome goes down. So Brother East Leo, I don't even know if he was still in power then, didn't help his Western brother Rome. So Rome goes down. Led away. Hupagi. Led away to destruction. And to destruction, led away. Yep, that's what happened. Now, that's bad, but you'll notice it's a nine. Trinity meter, God has a purpose. And what, what, what would happen as a result of that? Well, everybody would scatter. And when you're scattering, you're taking your Bible with you, and you're going anywhere where the conflict is not. So you're going to a place of safety with your Bible, and therefore new people you'll encounter, and new people will learn of that Bible, eventually. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. Sorry. So now we get here, and now it gets a little more complicated because I have to explain something that John is also doing. I think I'll leave that for another increment because I gotta take my cough medicine. I forgot to take it. 